guys and girls, welcome back, Red Mist in the house once again, how you doing, I hope everyone's doing great, I'm doing great, and we my friends are playing some more Kings and Magic, now I want to go ahead and start off by showing you kind of what I've been getting up to, now one thing that I would honestly say as a new player on a brand new server, once you start going through the map, is save up your prestiges and your runes for the best things that you can get so as you can see here i'm up to the mystic forest and i'm a little bit through the mystic forest now i think i'm about a quarter of the way uh through the first little bit well actually i'm like three bits through but i've played a little bit of the tower and i'm almost halfway through the tower i'm at stage 20 so that's kind of where i'm at at the moment um, when it comes to um, like leveling up through the map um, also I've done a fair bit of the hard mode so you can see that I've got up into the desert in hard mode now when it comes to my heroes you can see at the bottom my heroes are sort of level 37 to 40 ish um, so quite low level still at the moment and as you can see I'm still pretty much running like really inferior gear um, so that's super super bad at the moment but one thing that I want to show you guys is pretty much this so every single day when the reset happens every single day your priority is to get runes now getting runes in kings of magic is uh sorry king and magic um is a lot easier than it is in magic legion now the reason why i say this guys is because of this now magic legion doesn't actually let you upgrade this rune giant whereas king of uh, king of magic actually let you upgrade it so once you're at level six of everything you can upgrade this bad boy and you can see here as you level it up it's going to give you more rune production per hour so therefore you're going to be able to get those really good skills uh, faster but one thing that you need to do every single day is come in here and i would honestly say that you need to buy 10 of each of these bad boys because the value of the uh, trading in the prestiges into runes and the gold into the runes as well up to 10 each per day is very very viable um if you're gonna spend diamonds then you never want to spend over two because you're gonna spend 30 diamonds for 15 then 50 diamonds for 15 so effectively you're spending 80 diamonds for 30 runes after that the price starts going way too high so possibly buy two so you're only spending 80 diamonds for uh, 30 runes that's a good value anything over buying two of them is not worth the spending the diamonds now the next thing that you want to do is come into the uh into here now in my personal opinion you want to buy anything that is going to give you energy um or stamina because it's going to give you an advantage in the long run anything else that you want to buy is kind of up to you but i would su strongly suggest that you majority only go for stamina stuff and even to the point of here where you can buy like pieces for legendary gear i wouldn't do it i would literally just skip that and i would buy the chest so i would always buy the chests that are um valuable for you at the moment so at the moment being so low level and needing the gear bronze is good for me um look at the chest rates excuse me look at the chest rates and see what it is that they're going to provide you with so at the moment i need any p particular level of uh armor so buying gold uh, bronze chests is going to work out valuable for me but if you don't need anything below blue then I wouldn't bother buying the, the bronze chests anymore. I would start only buying silver or above. If it gets to the point that you have everything in your arsenal is completely purple, then the same thing. I would only bother buying the gold chests. Now, 
when it comes to the shop, you're going to get a silver chest for six runes. Uh, sorry, you're going to get a bronze chest for six runes. A silver chest is 15 runes, I want to say. And a gold chest is 30 runes. Um, and these ones here, the potion boxes, they're 20. So the potion boxes, again, are actually quite useful um, because they're going to help you improve your team a lot further as well. If you get stuck in a stage, you can give them bad boys a little hit. And as you can see here, it's going to provide you with one random spell and then you can, or one random potion. So you can see here, if you activate this, you're going to get plus 10 strength for one hour. Now you can activate every single one of these potions all at the same time and have all of the stats activated for one hour. So effectively you're going to get like 10% on every single stat in your inventory for one hour, which would be really, really helpful sometimes if you're struggling to get past a boss. Now that's one of the main things that I say that you need to do. Now, the next thing that you need to do when you're doing that, guys, is coming into here. And me personally, I go through the map and go through every single um, passive spell. And I buy everything up to 100, uh, anything below 200 prestiges, I will buy all, straight away. Everything over 200 prestiges, because of buying the chests, you have the possibility of getting the cards. So these cards here, you can get these cards from any single uh, chest that you open, whether it's a bronze, silver or uh, gold, and they come in every single tier of cards. So they're the ones that you use to predominantly buy the more expensive prestigious spells. So for example, um, that's for the library. I haven't unlocked the library yet, but for example, you could come in here and just click through the spells and you can see like this one here is 500 prestigious. So if I had the card, I would click that and I would buy that for free rather than spending my prestigious. So just use that to your advantage guys and make sure that you are doing that. Now, to go through a little bit further, what I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm actually going to go ahead and use up some of my diamonds just because I want to get some big battle strength going on and hopefully move a lot further through the map so I can get a ton more free diamonds. Unfortunately, nothing special there, but we are going to go ahead and use our half price card that we've unlocked from doing the map, which means we're going to get a times 10 nice we just got a couple of really good cards. Now, this Charming Witch is probably the like the best five-star hero that you can get, guys, because she is amazing. Having the King of Blood, not too bad, but not that great. The Demon Dragon, again, not too bad, but not too great. So let's go ahead and open up one of these bad boys again, see if we can get anything else quite special. Nice, another witch. That's what I'm talking about. Nice, so sh that's really going to help out our team a lot, guys, having that witch. Um, ideally, I want an Arno. Nice, the Pumpkin Drake, another witch. That's pretty damn cool. And we're going to get a free card draw because of the event at the moment, opening up three card lots. Come on, baby. Nice, a War Mage. That's what I'm talking about. So, pretty much, guys, what you've just witnessed right here is me going and getting the two best five star heroes in the game now the reason why i say that is because these two heroes here the war mage and the uh, charming witch are the best combination of heroes that you can get now i i do have this guy on a plus one because of obviously you saw me get him as free and he's a reward in the uh, in the thingy majiggy now in terms of attack power and uh, ability, he's not too bad, but he's not exactly great either. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to replace him for, for now, probably the ancient droid. Um, just because that's going to provide me with like another tanky uh, unit to go in my front line. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put him in the front line, which is really great. And one thing that I'm going to show you here, guys, is your war mage is actually your tank. 
Now, you've got to remember that. He is your tank. He's going to sit in the front row. He's going to build up HP like a beast um, because you're going to focus his HP on building up stats. Um, where are we going? We need to go here. So, as you can see here, when it comes into his stats, if we go into stats, you can see that I'm predominant. Other than the mistake that I made and put a couple of points into magic, um, you're going to just put his stats into end and HP because he doesn't attack the enemy team. So, you don't need to build up his attack power. All you need to build up is his survivability because both of his abilities. If you look down at the bottom, restores 50 points of rage to the friendly unit with the lowest rage and then increases 50% uh, of attack speed. So both of his spells affect your own team. No point going ahead and upgrading his um, attack case or, or his attack abilities. Same deal with the princess, uh, sorry, with the charming witch. Now the charming witch will stun all enemy targets for four seconds. Now... This is the best spell you will ever have in your life. Now, what we're going to do, guys, is I'm going to pretty much show you how ridiculous this spell is. Because what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and hit them just for free real quickly. And then we're going to come over here. Now, we're going to go into this up here. Um, and we're going to go jump into the tower very quickly. Now... The reason why this spell is so good is because it locks down the whole entire team. So if you're new to this kind of game and you don't know, once the rage bar is filled up, which obviously the uh, war mage is going to help increase that a lot, the enemy team is not going to be able to attack because watch this. The witch, you can see all those purple vines. That means that the enemy team is locked down for four seconds. Now, if you look at the rage that the uh, the war mage is giving the witch, before they're even unfrozen, the witch is already able to lock them down. So, as I said before, guys, if you're brand new to the game and you haven't played Magic Legion, then these two heroes are the best two five star heroes you can have in your team now the only way you can really change this round is if you actually replace the war mage for the blood commander the blood commander is a very good hero now a couple of things that a lot of people will actually do will be they will run the blood commander the war mage the witch and arno that is probably the most overpowered like combination of heroes you can run because of the fact of the war mage is going to increase the speed the witch is going to lock down the enemy team the blood commander is going to increase all of your team's attack and arno is probably the strongest dps hero in the whole entire game so he's going to have even more attack so that's just pretty much like op as hell so you can see here, just by having the Witch and the War Mage in the team, we are able to fly through this no problem. We've got the um, we've got the Magic Idol who's going to be sitting there doing a ton of damage because of her sp her secondary spell. Now look at this, guys. Even though I have just gone and died, my Witch is going to basically win me this game because now the enemy team aren't going to be able to attack at all, and if it's a case of she actually gets unfrozen or killed. Like, look at that. He, the boss actually killed me. But the team is just so strong. And you've got the backup uh, immobilization from the magic idol as well. So it is a really good combination to have. Because not only do you have the stun effect from the, from the witch. You have the immobilization stunny kind of thing from... The magic idol as well so it's like double uh punishment for not being able to negate spells which is a really good thing to have because obviously if the enemy team can't attack you they can't kill you so you're gonna win so many more fights just because of the fact that the enemy team can't attack you and it is absolutely ridiculous so you can see here like even though my battle damage isn't that strong I'm able to win these fights very, very easily. Um, and obviously because of getting a few of the witches and stuff from the card packs that we've just gone ahead and opened up, 
I'm going to be able to evolve her a little bit more and make her even more survivable, um, which is going to help me out even better. Um, the other thing that you've got to remember as well, guys, is if you look at these over here as well, these, uh, I can't remember what they're called. I think they're like illum um, illusionist or illusion mages or something. But that shield that they provide is going to reduce damage by 50%. So again, it's a real pain in the butt trying to kill uh, the boss or kill the enemy when they're using that spell. But because of the witch locking them down, they don't even get the chance to cast them spells again because they're just frozen. Um, so again, you're able to like overpower fights that would normally be really hard to win just because you've got that witch in there. And she's just so amazing. So let's go ahead. Excuse me. Let's go ahead and hit finish off this level 25. Now, for finishing level 25 in this uh, tower, we are going to get the opportunity of a six-star hero. And that's why I was purposely wanting to show, do it and show you this in the fight. Now, you can see here, this is actually going to be a bit of a harder fight. But we have this shield so that hopefully the next time... If they get another chance to attack, um, the ancient droids isn't actually going to die, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, and we're going to be able to continue to do this fight. Now, the good thing about the ancient droid is obviously he hits in a column, so front and back is going to get damaged. Um, the, uh, the magic idol could possibly hit six times on any random hero, so tons of damage going on good stuff and things even better that is a six star hero card heroes are leveling up getting some more chests we're doing some stuff and things we're doing amazing stuff and things um and we can come down here now the other thing as well guys that i want to tell you about is before we go you must go and fight in the arena now you can see here in the arena I have actually managed to make it to 465 rank on this server at the moment. I have my five battles down the bottom that I can complete today. But the reason why you need to um, do these missions is because, as you can see here, for being ranked 464 at the moment on the server, I'm getting a daily reward of 30 runes, 300 arena points, and... 90,000 gold now these arena points you can use in the store um, for random stuff whatever you want to pick whether you want to save them up for a six star hero save them for a five star hero whatever you want to buy with them guys you can buy so make sure you're doing the arena fights because of obviously you're going to get more better rewards um, for moving up through the line now let's just quickly go ahead and open up these chests because, like I said before, all of the gear that it's going to give me is going to be great. If it gives me any cards, like, look at that, guys. It's just gone and given me a Grand Academy card. So that means I can buy a spell in the Academy for completely free. It's given me another five-star hero card. So let's go ahead and open up these bad boys because this is going to give me another five, five, or well, a possibility of five more heroes of four to six-star caliber. So maybe even get a six star hero, which would be amazing. But so far, not very good. Um, two mediocre five star heroes. So not any useful to me. Uh, Bounty Hunter, again, mediocre five star hero. No use to me. Um, come on, baby. Give me something good in this car. Oh, Jesus, Night Ranger. Absolutely useless four star hero. But on the upside, a good 20 runes. And the Ogre Warrior, again, another 20 runes right there. Let's see if we can get a good 6-star hero. Arno would be amazing. Magic Idol would be amazing. Source of Fear is actually a very good tank. Um, so we're probably going to be removing this bad boy from the team. And we're going to be putting in the Source of Fear because he is a badass tank. Um, really, really good tank. If you have him then you are in for a gold mine right here, guys. Look at these stats. Now, the first one, he's just going to do 300 damage to a single target and clear some rage, but the secondary skill, he's going to deal 300 damage to all enemy targets and turn all that damage to his HP. 
So if he does 10,000 worth of damage, he's going to build himself up for 10,000 HP. So that's why he makes himself a really good tank. Um, so that is amazing. Let's go ahead and just claim these runes right here. Because what we are going to do is we're going to very quickly go and evolve these heroes. So let's evolve uh, the War Mage real quick. And we're going to go ahead and evolve the Witch really quick. So that is a really good starting lineup, guys. I'm going to continue moving on. I really hope that you're doing well in your game. Please put down in the comments what heroes you're using in your lineup at the moment. You can see that my heroes are these right now. Got quite a few heroes actually now because of those card pack openings. But tell me in the comments down below what heroes are you using? What is your battle strength? And I shall see you in the next one. Peace on the streets.